Hey guys, it's the Van City Vapor coming back at you. Just wanted to do a quick review today. Um, I usually don't do mod reviews, but because it's pretty much been my baby um, and my go to, I am going to be doing a review on the 26650 Cartel Boss Mods thing, the steel. It is from Cartel Mods. Uh, this I purchased off of Tyler Jillier. Tyler, thank you very much. I will be getting back to you. Still owe you quite a bit. Anyways, on to the mod itself. Um, just before I start, I'm actually vaping on uh, something from Vaporology Canada and the Vapor Stash. It's called House of Flavor, and uh, it's one of their house juices. This one happens to be Shogun. It's a honeydew bubble gum. What can I say? I like melons. Take that as you wish. Anywho, <laughs> uh, what I've got running in my cartel is uh, it's on a Dark Horse clone, and it is a five wrap. 20 gauge Canthal Nicro Mix. It's called Cloud Chaser Wire. I picked this wire up from Gold Seal e Juice, and they happen to be my new employer. It does chuck really, really well, as you can see. It does chuck the vapor. Running it on a freshly charged Imrin 26650, obviously, because it is a 26650 mod. Fancy that. Anywho, bit about the mod. Stainless steel construction. Really, really sturdy build. I have to admit. Um, the one thing I do love about it is that it has a very hefty, hefty hand feel. It is one of those mods that if you don't like something big in your hands, don't get it. So, truthfully. And you can be as dirty minded as you like, but the thing is with this mod, it is not for the faint of heart. If you do like something a bit sturdy in your hand, it's a great mod to have. Um, the threading on this mod is phenomenal. As you can see, it is quite a nice mod. Buttery smooth threads. As you can as you can see, oops, drop the uh, button there. No squeaking. That is the sign of a good mod. 303 grade stainless steel. The top, beautiful, very buttery smooth. Now, here is this. I have to admit, it's a bit of a con for me. It's a dual pin system, so how it's supposed to work is you get uh, your atomizer. It adjusts to any atomizer, which, by the way, is a 510 connection. I'm using the flathead. It does come with a uh, molded head for uh, smaller atomizers. This is meant to hold a 28 millimeter, but I have my dark horse on here, which is 22. It's standard. The connection is very solid, very nice, very simple. It's got a Delrin insulator on the inside. Now, there can be a problem with this. This Delrin insulator tends to pop out. That can be a, uh, a con for some. It's a bit of an annoyance, but eh, it's not a really big deal to me. But this, this little bit here, this is an annoyance because you have to screw it in and whenever you put a new atomizer on 
it has to fit and sit flush with your 510 connection on the bottom. Then this little bit here, this one, you extend to meet up with your battery. Right? Now, the other thing with this, let's put this off to the side. The tube is, well, it's a very well constructed tube. Now, what I have found with this, being an authentic, it is kind of odd, but what I have found with the authentic mods is that when you first get it in the box, this is your spring. Now, it seems like a typical spring. And I'm sure that there are magnets that you can get in place of the spring. I haven't found any yet, though. The spring will sit in this area. That little hole is your vent for any extraneous um, gases or buildup that may happen in your tube. If your 26650 does happen to vent, this is the only escape route. How it works is when you place your spring in and then you place your button atop the spring that compresses it. Now around the button itself is space but for where your where the expanding gases are going to have to go it can only go through that hole and through that hole it will escape out the bottom of the battery of where the throw is quite nice now sl that's a slight con for me that being said the adjustments I have had to make when I got this mod were a little strange normally you would take your battery, insert it in the top of your tube. Now, the nice thing about this tube is that the battery does not go at the bottom. It has to come in from the top. It also has to exit from the top. Now, because of the way the spring is set up, and because of the way it works with this mod, battery goes in backwards. Positive end facing down. This way, no battery rattle. And once you're able to make that connection, you are going to notice there is a little bit of battery rattle, so you're going to have to finagle a little bit. But you make sure that that first screw is touching the top of your atomizer. <clears throat> and when you screw it down into place, shake it, and it fires. Now, like I was saying, it's a bit of a calm. Reason why I say it's a bit of a calm. Because if I go if I go in, take my battery out, flip it around so that it, the button's at the top, and I have been playing around with this. Notice the difference; it does not screw down all the way, and it won't fire. Why is that? Well. When I bought it off of Tyler, and I do not doubt for a moment that this is an authentic mod, the strange thing was, he was told by Gino at Cartel Mods, turn the battery around, because the pin connection at the bottom is not making connection with the bottom of the battery when you put the battery in the proper way. 
But if you turn it around, you will get a fire. You will have the mod fire up and work properly. Now, pin might have adjusted, so I don't know if it's going to fire right away, but luckily, the pin didn't adjust up. Now, that's another point that may throw a lot of people off, especially when you're using mechanical mods. But there is a final thing that really is a real annoyance and a con for me on this mod. That is the bottom firing button. I love it because it's absolutely flush. I can set it down on a table. It's not going to fire. I know it's not going to fire. Even if I push down on the mod, it's not firing. Because that battery slits flush and there is no locking mechanism. However, on occasion, because of that spring I showed you, that spring superheats. When it superheats, it causes the button to go hot. Now, whether that's because of the build, or whether that's just an issue with the mod, I haven't tried various builds on it yet, but as it stands, I have burnt myself a couple times by firing my mod. So all in all, Cartel Mod our Cartel Boss Mod, 26650 Retail price, around 200 some odd. Not sure of the exact retail, as I did buy it used off of somebody else. Now, next thing. Would I buy this if uh, it wasn't offered to me? I'd have to say, yeah. Yeah, I would. Why? Because the button issue, easily fixable. Reverse battery, I've seen no big deals with it. I've tested it, I've run it through its paces, I've had no issues with it. Now, whether that's entirely safe? Well, I haven't had any bad experiences. Now again, these are my opinions. I'm not saying that it would be completely safe. However, is it something I would purchase? Definitely. Why? Love the look, love the feel, and it's got some kick to it. But anyways, this video has run on for a little bit. And uh, yeah, if you've got any comments, any insights, any views on this particular mod, do feel free to message me, leave a comment in the box below. Please like, subscribe, and I look forward to hearing from you in future. Till then, this is the Van City Vapor signing out, and happy paper trails.